You know, a training partner is somebody that you see four or five days out of the week, somebody that you can really trust, someone that spots you, talks to you, all that stuff, your friend, you know, your bro. Somebody that you pay for contest prep is somebody that tells you what to eat and what not to eat, somebody that, you know, gives you an assessment of your physique and tells you what supplements to take, and it's a very important person. Uh, a few years ago, I knew a girl that I talked to in the gym quite often, and she had a boyfriend that was into bodybuilding. He competed, took steroids, all that. And um, this guy, I guess, loved money more than he loved bodybuilding, and there's a lot of people out there like that. And so what he did was um, he got into contest prep, and he was real good at it. You know, people liked him. He was real hardcore, a little bit of a jerk, but real hardcore, and um, people respected him. And he was a good friend, you know, on the surface. Um, also had a lot of workout partners, and, you know, they idolized him. Big guy, strong guy, hardcore, you know, to himself. And so he... Uh, he started selling steroids to the people that did contest prep and also to his workout buddies and everybody liked it uh, you know they got stronger but never quite as strong as him never quite as ripped as him people didn't really recover as quickly as he did He'd go out drinking with his workout buddies but um, he didn't really ever experience the same effects that they did with the liquor or the other stuff they always seemed to be one step ahead of the game and uh, it was weird because he was a greedy fucker and he loved money and he was very open about selling the stuff illegally and so what he did was he got himself like a photoshop like program and i say photoshop like because i don't know if photoshop can make labels or not but he started making labels and he started buying vials and then he came up with this concoction where he was making um i think it was like peanut oil and vinegar is what i what i was told it was and uh, he'd get a vial of steroids for himself, and with a needle, he would take 10% out of his own supply, put it into this concoction of peanut oil and vinegar, label it, seal it, and sell it. And he wasn't selling it to, like, you know, random people on the street. Not that that would have been okay, but, you know, you sell it to random people on the street. I, I would imagine in the, in the black market, that's how it usually goes. You don't know these people. They're just, you know, buying drugs illegally that you're selling illegally. It's a vicious cycle. But no, he was selling uh, this 10% concoction to the people that were paying him money for contest prep. And he was selling it to his own workout partners. And he would get stronger and more cut and he'd recover faster and they wouldn't. And you could see him in the gym. I mean, they would li literally beat themselves up emotionally and physically sometimes because, you know, they were eating right and they were resting and they were taking this this product that they thought was anabolic steroids and they weren't getting stronger. I mean, they were getting a little stronger. I guess that 10% amounted to something because I guess they could feel something, but they couldn't feel what he felt and they wanted to because, you know, I think part of them, they wanted to keep up with him. You know, they wanted to be part of his crew. They wanted to be like him and they couldn't because he was fucking them over. And it's interesting to see all this, you know, to, to observe it and to, talk to the girl that was telling me all this stuff and it's interesting because this was a long long time ago you know and I've waited this is probably over 10 years ago so it's safe to talk about um, but you know it happens pretty often and this video isn't so much about you not doing steroids or you not going to the black market because honestly you shouldn't go to the black market you can go to a doctor nowadays and you shouldn't do steroids if you're like you know under 21 because that's just stupid you don't need them um, but this video is about treachery and it's interesting because when it comes to something like steroids <clears throat> or even contest prep in general, you can't really trust anybody, but especially steroids. Let's, 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 let's be real here. Let's say what we're talking about. We're talking about steroids. Uh, and when we talk about steroids, obviously we're talking about insulin and synthol and growth and everything under the sun that would be, you know, brush stroked as a steroid by the mainstream press. Cause that's really, um, who calls the shots in popular culture. It's the mainstream press. And when it deals, when you're talking about steroids, you can't really trust anybody. You can't trust your workout partner, which is really sad because that's like your bro. You can't trust your contest prep person because, well, you, that's really stupid because you're paying them to prep you, but you can't trust them either. If you're in a fitness team, I know you probably think your fitness team guru is like the coolest thing since Jesus Christ, but you can't trust them either. Because the problem is, is that steroids are a multi-billion dollar a year industry 
and the dealers are making a lot of money. And unfortunately, to a lot of people, friendship and loyalty and integrity fall a distant, distant second for money. If a Fortune 500 corporate whatever can send thousands of his employees home for Christmas without anything, without any money, without any way to pay their rent, why do you think that your workout partner, your contest prep guy, or your fitness team director wouldn't screw you over and sell you a bullshit product like steroids? And what are you going to do? Who are you going to complain to? I mean, you know, call the cops and be like, oh, I got bad steroids. You know, it's, it's a really fucked up thing. And in, you know, in some big cities, someone can get shot and killed for something like that. But this guy was in a little bum town and he was screwing over buddies and clients and getting away with it. And if he was doing it as openly as he was doing it, I wonder how many more assholes out there are doing the same thing. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. Please leave comments. And of course, please subscribe. I'm Christian Duke from strengthaddicts.com. Take care.